If you want to understand what OT asset management really means and what it is all about, it helps to go back in time and, and get an understanding of how that whole OT field actually evolved, how that digital OT, that networked OT came into being, how it, how it uh, got that um, importance that it enjoys right now. So it all started with the capability to process the data from your equipment, from your sensors, actuators, etc., that you could, could process all that information on computers. And certainly at a time when computers became considerably cheap, you, you are no longer talking about uh, mainframe computers or those mini computers. So we are talking about personal computing, we are talking about networks. It was all about the process data. And that yielded a, a lot of, of value for the asset owners. Uh, that um, they thought, well, fantastic, let's have more of that. And so they got more process data. Um, and that continued to a point where we are now, where uh, organizations struggle to actually understand what they got when it comes to the infrastructure. And that is the blind spot that OT asset management addresses. So the whole development of OT was always focusing on process data, on the content, if you will, in, in modern parlance, right? It was focusing on the content. And OT asset management, on the other hand, is focusing on infrastructure. Certainly, you need a proper infrastructure so that this content is reliable, it's accurate, it's, it's timely, etc. Right? And, and that is the, the, the big divide and, or the, the big shift in, um, in your attention when you want to understand what OT asset management is really about. It is, is, it's about your infrastructure that is made up of uh, hardware, software and, and networks. OT asset management does not focus on those transient data flows that go back and forth. So for asset management, that's an externality. Uh, therefore, it also does not focus on, um, on anomaly detection. And that's another thing to, to, where, where it helps to you, to, if, if you apply this lens, where it helps you to separate OT asset management from, from, uh, from ICS detection, as an example. You can clearly see that in the beginning uh, of OT security as an industry, we saw that same mindset. We have to focus on data content. This is what uh, anomaly detection is all about, right? But this is not where what OT asset management is all about. In asset management, you focus on configurations. You focus on considerably static asset properties. You don't focus on data content. And for that reason, well, you are concerned with a very reliable and accurate determination of the various firmware versions that you have installed, the, the network topologies, etc. And now uh, here, here is the interesting twist of events, I would say. Uh, you can make the argument that this focus on infrastructure gets you to a much better place uh, when, when it comes to OT security, because now you can really focus on vulnerability mitigation, on long-term vulnerability mitigation. Since all of those CVEs, uh, by the way, how many are there in, uh, if you look uh, at, at the, the present total of CVEs, it's roughly about uh, 250,000, okay? No, that's quite a lot. So that, that gives attackers a lot of stuff to work with. And all of these, uh, their, their importance, their, um, the question, are you affected by these CVEs or not? All of these can be answered just by looking at your infrastructure, period. You don't need to look at data content. It's all about the infrastructure and configuration. And this is what OT asset management brings to the table. So as opposed to focusing on the data that moves back and forth on the wire, that's a different area of OT security that we have focused on for much too long. So in, in other words, I could say that the same mistake was made as, as, as with OT as a whole, that uh, users were obsessed 
with data content. And I mean, I, that, that's not a criticism because uh, certainly it was uh, uh, valuable. It, it was so valuable that this whole field exploded. But that is where the problem comes in. Because all that development of, of OT and OT networks in, uh, in factories, etc., was not properly governed. It was not properly planned. It was just done as yet another bolt-on extension of existing networks. It was done without any systematic planning. It was done without any risk management, if you will, right? So what, what would the consequences be? It was, it was done without any change management. And that's the big issue that needs to be resolved today because asset owners find themselves in a spot where they, they just totally lost track of what they have. So the, the fate of the enterprise is built on something that they no longer fully understand. That is the issue at hand, right? And, and why do they no longer understand that? Because the, the complexity just went totally overboard. Uh, let, let's start with a very simple question. How many networks are we talking about in a typical manufacturing environment for, let's just say, a, a mid to large size factory? But it, it's certainly more than five or something that you would expect on the IT side. Let me tell you, usually it's a couple hundred. You didn't know that as the asset owner was well, sorry, or you should, right? And, and beyond that, you should exactly and specifically know what is connected to those networks. You should exactly know all the, all the gateways, all the routing paths that are possible. You should exactly um, know about all the, the characteristics of these networks, their, their purpose, uh, what, what are the endpoints in there for, right? What, what, what uh, operating system versions are those endpoints running? Are, are those uh, VFDs? Are those sensors? Are those uh, office PCs? What do you have? Well, guess what? Some, some asset owners are surprised when they introduce an asset management system. Oh, uh, oh we didn't know, but we have so many networks we, we, we have never heard about, and, and we even we, we have found PLCs on the enterprise price network. That is a regular observation and that gives you an idea about the, um, the overboarding complexity that has led to this scenario where asset owners completely lost track. And the bottom line is this problem has become so big that there is no way that you could solve or even address that problem by using Microsoft Excel and, and a bunch of guys that you send around and they, they try to collect a, a manual asset inventory, it doesn't work, right? So, so this is where you definitely must use an automated OT asset management solution such as OT base. This, this is what we are doing. This is what OT asset management is all about. It's, it's about the, the capability to understand your OT infrastructure and also to assess if that infrastructure is configured properly in respect to OT security, so when you think about your attack surface, and also in respect to efficiency, in respect to maintainability. All of that comes into play because let's just say you have all those high-flying dreams about the digital transition and the industry 4.0, but how would you ever be able to get there by, by simply bolting on another IoT device onto your existing networks? That, that's not going to cut it. So you, you must be able to furnish a strategy. And uh, this is on something that you can only do based on data. And the OT asset management system is the, the, that platform that yields this data.